It's been a little while since we checked out MX Linux on this channel, so why don't we check it out in today's video? Hello again everyone, and welcome back to Learn Linux TV, your home for Linux related fun and learning. In today's video, what we're going to do is take a look at MX Linux. Now, I've already looked at this distribution in the past, and a few versions have come out since then. I've been very busy with the studio, but now that things have settled down, I wanted to check out a distribution that I haven't used in a while, and MX Linux is the one that I've chosen. So what I'm going to do is tell you all about my experience using MX Linux here in 2024. And MX Linux is a distribution of Linux that's clearly in a league of its own. It's based on Debian, something that I'm sure the majority of my audience is more than aware of, but it adds some additional features on top of Debian that makes it its own experience. And when I say that there's additional features added on here, there's a lot of additional features. MX Linux is basically what you get if a system administrator designs a Linux distro. There's GUI tools for configuring and tweaking just about anything. And there's so much customization in this distribution that it bears little resemblance to Debian Bookworm, the version that it's based on. And I've had some time to sit down with MX Linux and check it out. So what I'm going to do is give you my updated impressions in today's video. Now with all of that out of the way, let's dive into MX Linux and check it out. Okay, so what exactly is MX Linux? I did mention a few things already, so we already understand that it's based on Debian, but let's talk a little bit more about what makes MX Linux different from Debian. Like I mentioned earlier, MX Linux is based on Debian Stable, currently Debian 12. From there, there's customizations all over the place to where MX Linux becomes its own thing. And just look at this desktop. If you were to compare this to normal Debian, it looks completely different, doesn't it? And that's because MX Linux makes a lot of customizations and tweaks to their distribution that puts it in its own category. It literally looks nothing like the distribution that it's based on. And you may not even realize at first that what you're looking at is the XFCE desktop, which is the desktop environment, the flagship desktop environment for MX Linux. So what you're seeing is XFCE that's highly customized and basically everything has been rearranged, moved, changed, tweaked, or customized in some way to add to the overall experience. And also, with MX Linux being based on Debian Stable, Debian 12 in particular with the latest release, it's a rock solid desktop. However, basing on Debian usually has the side effect of the included software being several versions behind whatever version of that software is the most current. MX Linux, on the other hand, does cherry pick some things to package themselves, with Firefox being an example of this. As a result, MX Linux is a distribution that's very approachable with some of the quality of life features that you'd find in newer versions of software, even custom quality of life features baked in. So this distribution caters to pretty much everyone. And one of the things that I love most about MX Linux is the attention to detail. I mean, just about everything was thought of here, even things that I didn't think to ask for, they've thought of. For example, when you go to install MX Linux after using live mode for a while, there's a checkbox during installation to copy your live mode settings into the finalized install. And sure, it doesn't take all that long to, you know, type in your Wi-Fi password or something like that. It's not like it saves us a bunch of work, but it's all these little things like this that go a long way to give us an experience that's unlike any other distro. But if I had to play devil's advocate, I'd say the amount of tools and utilities might seem a little overkill at times, since there's an entry in the applications menu for just about everything. But even though MX Linux does look a little busy, I think a decent portion of my audience will appreciate the multitude of options that are available in this distribution. Another potential criticism of this distribution is that sometimes it seems to go out of its way to be different, to the point where sometimes it seems different just for the sake of being different. One example of this is the panel. It's set up differently than in any other distributions that I've used, but I'm not really sure if the layout is any better when it comes to a functional standpoint. I mean, to be fair, this is not the only distribution that has the panel on the left-hand side, but even the ones that do that have the app menu on the top of the panel, but this one puts it at the bottom, so it's almost like it's reversed. And I'm not sure that the application menu being on the bottom is really going to add any functional use to this, but 
Then again, it is unique, so there's that. It has personality, and that personality could be felt all throughout the desktop. So even if that is different for the sake of being different, it really doesn't matter so much since we could change it if we don't like it. This is XFCE after all, so we could rearrange the entire desktop if we want to. But the default experience that MX Linux gives you is pretty cool, even if it is a little weird at times. And I do think that this is a very good Linux distribution, and already I could tell you that you should definitely check it out, even if to experience something that's different from the majority of distributions out there. You might end up liking it. Sorry to interrupt myself, but I just wanted to let you know that I really enjoy making this content for you guys. I have a ton of fun. If you enjoy the content that I produce, then please consider supporting Learn Linux TV. The thing is, producing content like this isn't cheap. So by giving back to the channel, you can help me make even more content for you guys. And to find out more about how you can support Learn Linux TV, what you could do is go to support.learnlinux.tv and there you'll find some of the ways that you can help support the channel. Anyway, let's get back to the video. Now, minor criticisms aside, there is one criticism that I think will affect more of you, and that is the fact that there's no upgrade path when it comes to MX Linux. That means when a new version comes out, you'll have to reinstall the entire distribution. And that does sound like a downside, and in my opinion, it really is. But at the same time, they do try to facilitate you. For example, they have a GUI option that you could use to export a list of packages that you have installed. That, combined with putting your home directory on its own partition, might save you from the majority of work when it comes to setting up a new distro version. But I do find it curious that MX Linux doesn't have an upgrade path when Debian itself does, and Debian is one of those distributions where upgrades generally work. So if MX Linux is built on a distribution where the upgrades generally work, then why don't they put some time into this and make this easier for users, especially when they've made everything else easy for the users? So that is one potential big downside here, the fact that we can't upgrade from one release to another. But then to be fair, they don't release new versions every nine months like Ubuntu does, for example. So in practice, it may not be all that bad. But overall, this distribution is really, really fun. Everything is very unique. Even the installer was a unique experience, giving me some useful options and tweaks. I've mentioned this before, but the ability to save changes from your live session into your final installation is pretty cool. And then after you install MX Linux, you can continue to tweak. You can spend a lot of time tweaking this distribution because there's pretty much no option that they keep hidden from you. MX Linux provides what's quite possibly the best XFCE experience that you can get here in 2024, at least of the ones that I've used. While most distributions give you a standard XFCE experience, again, this distribution makes MX Linux its own. And if you go through all the applications that are installed by default here in MX Linux, it's just staggering. Like I mentioned earlier, there's a menu option for just about everything. The distribution for me has been very fast, it's been solid, I've had a lot of fun using MX Linux. Other than the fact that you can't upgrade this distribution when a new version comes out, I have no reservations when it comes to recommending this to any of you that want to check it out. All in all, I really enjoyed my time with MX Linux and preparing this updated impressions video for you guys and giving you my thoughts, I had a ton of fun. Overall, MX Linux is just great. Again, it's a unique distribution, so I recommend that all of you try it, if only to experience it for yourselves. You might end up using this on your computer as your daily driver. It's built on Debian, which is a stable base, so I don't think you'll be making a bad decision by using this as your daily driver. It's essentially Debian++. It has all the strengths of Debian, but then they take away some of the weaknesses. For example, you have the latest Firefox in this release. Normally, Debian likes to be a little bit more, you know, reserved when it comes to things like that. But MX Linux doesn't mind bending the rules a little bit to make sure that you get a great experience and you still benefit on the stable Debian base. So what did you think of this review? And also, what did you think of MX Linux in general? Leave me your thoughts in the comments down below. I look forward to reading what you guys have to say. In the meantime, though, those are my thoughts on MX Linux today in 2024. I hope you enjoyed this video and definitely check it out. If you did enjoy this video, please click the like button to let YouTube know that you enjoyed my content. I would really appreciate that, and I'll see you in the next video.